the Joe Rogan experience. So think B12, you know, that's a thing that came up in the film a number of times. So we should talk about that a little bit because there was some actually just, you know, factually inaccurate information about B12 that I want to correct. So the, the claim, um, this is slide 55, Jamie. James said uh, B12 is not made by animals. It's made by bacteria that these animals consume in the soil and water. Before industrial farming, farm animals and humans could get B12 by eating traces of dirt on plant foods or by drinking water from rivers or streams. Um, but now because of pesticides and antibiotics and chlorine that kill the bacteria, this vitamin, even farm that produces animals, this vitamin. yeah, that produces a vitamin, even farm animals have to be given B12 supplements. That's just all false. That's all just factually wrong. So first of all, B12 is made by bacteria, but it's animals don't get it from consuming soil and water. The, the B12 is made by bacteria in their gut. So in ruminants like cows, the, uh, in the rumen, which is a chamber in the stomach, the bacteria convert cobalt that they get from grass that they eat into cobalamin, which is B12. And then they are um, foregut fermenters. So they can absorb the B12 they, the bacteria produce in their in intestines and utilize that themselves. So primates, including humans, also have bacteria that make B12, but we're hindgut fermenters. So we cannot absorb the B12 that our own gut bacteria make. Uh, well, that's not exactly true. Chimps and gorillas can but that's only because they eat their own poo. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> that is one potential strategy for meeting the your B12 needs. You, I don't, you I can hope be, you didn't just put that out there. You can be coprophagic. We will find ethical poo eaters. <laughs> There's a whole community now of Reddit. Ethical poo eaters is now a new subreddit. <laughs> so, so, so we cannot get B12 from our own gut bacteria. Right. And, that, and if there is any B12 in soil, it's only from manure you know, that's come from animals. There's also zero evidence that B12 is fed to cattle. And there's no evidence that humans have ever been able to meet their B12 needs from just eating soil and water. If you pull up slide 56, Jamie, um, Jack Norris, who's a vegan dietitian, um, you know, we don't agree on a lot of things, but I appreciate his rigor with the science. Um, he has a big uh, article on B12 on this website, and it set, he says, the suggestion that humans have ever relied on unclean organic produce for vitamin B12 doesn't have any reliable evidence at this time. So the, I, I just, I don't know where to go with these, that claim, because it's just, yes. it's, it's demonstrably false, well, even from the perspective of a vegan registered dietitian. Yes. Yeah, I don't know why he said that either, but um, I just think that that's something he probably heard and he was probably having a conversation with someone and they told him that and he just repeated it. I mean, it's one yeah, of those or things. Or maybe he, one of the doctors on yes. the on the show yes. brought that up. So well, people repeat a lot of these things and then they become dogma. So here's the other thing. The, the second part of that claim was up to 39% of people tested, including meat eaters, are low on B12. As a result, best way for humans to get enough B12, whether they eat animal foods or not, is simply to take a supplement. He didn't provide a reference for that, so I can't, it's hard to check that. But again, this contradicts, you know, mounds of evidence on B12 deficiency. So there, you know, there's, there's four stages of B12 deficiency. I don't want to go too far in the weeds here, but basically serum B12, which is the marker that's usually used, only goes down in the fourth and final stage of B12 deficiency. There are other markers that will go out of range earlier that are more sensitive and detect those earlier stages. So the, the, the most sensitive marker is holotranscobalamin or holotc. So in a study in 2013, this is slide 58, Jamie, um, they compared B12 deficiency depletion according to holotranscobalamin levels in vegetarians, vegans, and omnivores. And you can see the results here. Only 11% of omnivores had B12 depletion, 77% of vegetarians, and 92% of vegans. That's a pretty big difference. That's a big difference. That's a big difference. And B12 is responsible for energy. I mean, that's Critical. one of the reasons why when people are feeling sick, they get a B12 shot. Well, it's also required for the myelin sheath in our nerves. B12 deficiency can cause serious and even irreversible neurological damage. Uh, a lot of the harm that comes that happens with kids on a vegan diet comes from B12 deficiency. It can decrease fluid intelligence. It can 
cause neurological damage that's not reversible even after they start eating meat again. Maybe that's what's going on with them in this information. Maybe they have le legitimate neurological damage. Is that possible? Uh, it's possible. I'm There's um, one, what about, one more ahead, if I please. can on that because I'm just passionate about this because it's super important. Um, slide 59. So homocysteine is a marker that is also more sensitive than serum B12. It's a sticky inflammatory protein that's associated with heart disease and dementia. So nine out of 10 comparisons that looked at B12 levels or homocysteine levels in vegetarians and omnivores found higher homocysteine levels in vegans and vegetarians. Higher means worse, and it means more B12 deficient. And in fact, the studies, they said the prevalence of hyperhomocysteinemia, which is high homocysteine levels reflecting low B12 among vegetarians may actually be higher than among non-vegetarians already diagnosed with heart disease. So this is kind of a big deal. It's like the B12 issue is serious, and, and even folks like Jack Norris, to their credit, do acknowledge it and, and strongly recommend that people who are on a vegan diet supplement. So if people watch this film, you know, it, I'm glad to hear James saying that, that, you know, vegetarians and vegans should supplement. I don't think omnivores need to, usually. But you can watch that film and get the idea that that B12, you know, is maybe not that big of a deal. Right, it's a big right. deal. <laughs>